You see that? Dang it, I missed it! But you know what? I have a few more over there that we could pin today and help you get ready for your insect collection. I'm not as fast as I used to be, and sometimes they do get away, but that was an awesome ichneumonidae. But I do have a couple more over here that we can look at and practice our pinning. Let's go do that. In this segment of our video, we're going to um, learn how to pin insects how we're going to place them uh, on the pin and then get them ready to display for uh, your class. So um, I've been out collecting um, in the yard and got a whole bunch of, of insects uh, last couple weeks and I place them in to, to preserve them temporarily so they uh, do not uh, spoil or get too dry before pinning in rubbing alcohol, just regular isopropyl, 70% rubbing alcohol. And that'll keep them nice and fresh for you. And so if I would have caught that ichneumonid wasp, then I would have placed it in alcohol um, and then um, later remove it and then pin it. And so I have a whole bunch of insects in a bottle. I like to use um, these uh, medicine containers, just take off the label. You would dump your insects into a container like so. I use these featherweight forceps um, to remove the insects so you don't squish them. And so I'll take them out of the rubbing alcohol and I'll just let them kind of sit here uh, for a little while to dry. Sometimes I'll use a paper towel. Man, that is a big hemiptrin. Look at that. That's a beauty. And as you notice, I have lots of hemiptrins because uh, some of you have seen my other videos know I like to garden. So I get a lot of uh, insect pests um, that come by. And um, so I'll take these insects out and let them dry off. That is an ichneumonid wasp. Look at that ovipositor. Okay. It is not a stinger, so it can't really sting you. Ow! Oh. Gotcha. Gotcha. It can't sting you. But it is a beauty. That's a wonderful looking wasp. I'm going to lay that down there. Let that dry out. And a lot of these are repeats that I got from the garden. So I'm just going to work on, work on these right now. So what you want to do is, insects anatomically have a head, thorax, and an abdomen. Okay, so they have three main body parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. They have a chitinous exoskeleton. They have uh, three pairs of legs, total that's six legs, and antennae, compound eye. And, and so what we want to do is locate the thorax, because the pin is going to go through, through the thorax and slightly off to the right-hand side. And so I could let these uh, dry out a little longer. I'm going to put my favorite right there, the ichneumon, off to the side. And I'm going to do one of these pentatomids. This is in the order Hemiptera because it has a half wing and a piercing sucking mouth part. And I'm going to place the pin slightly off to the right side on the thorax. Right there, that's uh, where the scutellum is. And I'm going to then push it down onto my styrofoam. I like my styrofoam to be um, at least an inch thick because I want those legs to be supported by the styrofoam so that when it uh, when it dries its legs are up here we don't want the legs dangling down so when you move the specimens around it, it'll break and, and your teacher could possibly dock points uh, you know for a specimen that's not preserved correctly so so I'm gonna push that down so I have about well enough room to grab the pin there's there's professional little pinning boards that you can buy for the appropriate height, but I like it just right about there. It's about perfect. So I put that in there. If you have legs or wings that are kind of not in the, in the right position, if you want to move them, you can do that pretty easily just by taking the pin and holding the wing in the position that, that you want. Let it dry. And then say a day or two later, I can remove the pin and um, the legs or the wings will remain in that in that position. Okay. So again, if I, I grab this is a fly um, that I collected in the yard. Okay. And what I want to do is if I if, if if it is annoying for you to touch the insect, there's there's a couple different ways you can do that. Of course, the forceps. Remember these featherweight forceps are really handy. Um, you you can take the pin and just let the 
the insect rest on the styrofoam. Grab the insect with your forceps. Hold it in position. Remember, I am going to go for the thorax, right? So you have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen here. The legs and the wings always come off the thorax. That thorax is, I would say, the most pivotal part of, of the insect there. And so then I would get it at the proper height, right? I want to make sure that it's at the proper height so that when I put labels on it, like I showed you uh, previously in the collection, we'll have those, those labels eventually on there. It won't break up the insect. So there's my diptera. Diptera are the insects that have two wings. They only have two wings, the others have four wings. So again, here is a, another dipteran. So again, I grab my pin. I get my pins from BioQuip. Uh, they come in different sizes. I would say go with a number two. A number two insect pin has um, is probably the all-purpose pin. If you're going for some, going to pin something that's smaller, then you'd, you'd want a, um, a, a tinier pin in diameter. Slightly off to the side, there's my other dipteran. And again, right now I'm really not trying to group them necessarily. I'm just getting them pinned. And then we can place them uh, you know, in groups by uh, the label, the locality where we actually collected that organism. Let's do a squash bug. These squash bugs are, um, can be a gardener's nightmare. They will suck your plant dry. They'll lay a ton of eggs and it can take down a, a giant pumpkin really quickly. So again, I'm looking for the head, thorax, abdomen. I see the thorax right there. I'm gonna go slightly off to the right. And I'm gonna pierce that. I like using my fingers just because I'm used to it. Again, you can use the forceps. If you have a leg come off like that and that happens, then there's a couple different things you can do. If, you're, if your instructor gives you a little uh, allowance and leeway with a couple specimens, I think you'd be fine. If not, uh, you can use super glue. Elmer's glue works really good. I've helped students glue together an awful lot of legs. And I've had students that, you know, will pin a dragonfly, they need an odonata, and off goes the head. So a little glue, and you'll never even notice um, that, you know, look, there, there you go. Looks great. Okay, so I'm going to grab one more of these and, and do this, and then we're going to do our ichneumonid. Again, head, thorax, abdomen. I'm looking on just a little off to the side to put that pin. I'm using a number two insect pin. This is a hemipteran because of the half wing. And again, a leg came off on this one. These are brittle little buggers. We'll put that right there. Okay, let's do the ichneumonid. So on this, uh, this is a hymenoptera. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm gonna look for that thorax. And I'm going to go right through that thorax, slightly off the side. And then I'm going to place the specimen down on the styrofoam. That noise is all, always a little annoying, isn't it? You hear that? Anyway, so then we take, uh, I, I can again move things around, right? I can isolate the legs wherever I want them to be. And I like this, this ovipositor to kind of run nice down there. I'm going to kind of pin it here so it goes straight past the, the abdomen there. So let's say you're pinning and then uh, you get busy, you have to do something else. So these insects aren't wasted. I just take them. I put them back in my rubbing alcohol. I can put them back in my container. And I can continue to pin later when I have more time. And I can let these um, dry. And then once they, they uh, dry so that they won't, the legs won't drop or the wings sag or the abdomen sag, I can put the labels on and organize my, my insects. So we got a whole bunch of different scarab beetles. Just wonderful. And there was so many insects that came to the trap that night. Um, Basically what a light trap is, you have a fluorescent bulb and the insects are attracted to it, they can't, they're like, they can't get away from it, they just got to go to the light. So, um, and then we put, and we, we put some alcohol in a little bucket and then they fly right into it's a, uh, the bucket. It's a good way to um, collect a lot of different species in an area that will give you a good representation of 
the biodiversity of arthropods, uh, particularly insects in that, that area. Here's a Moloid beetle. So lots of scarab and Moloids. So very, very, very nice. Here's a Homoptron. We'll pin a couple of these. Let's just pin, pin them out right now, real quick. Um, I'm going to pin this beetle. Beetles are a little harder. The exoskeleton's a little tougher. And so, in some cases, there's no way I could do it like this because um, I'd have to put too much pressure and it'd be unsafe. I'd end up wearing the pan and we don't want to do that. So, but this is still pretty soft and flexible. So, once you get used to, to doing this, they will. You can pan insects uh, really, really quickly, and most of your teachers will, you know, have pinning labs either in class or after school, um, or you can just watch my videos and you can learn that way and pin at home all by yourself. So this is a Moloid beetle. Again, um, you can tell that there's a significant difference. We group these insects based on their physical physical traits. Isn't that a nice, a nice beetle? When you're comparing the two, the two beetles, this one's much, much more robust and a more rounded, a heavier looking beetle. And this is more narrow. Uh, these really like flowers, these Moloids. And this, that's a beauty. That actually came to the light trap, which, which is nice. Uh, I've never collected one of these here in, in Utah, northern Utah. So, kudos to Oklahoma. See, we can do it as well without even touching it you know, very quickly like that. So, so this is our Oklahoma City scarab. Scarabs have lamellate antennae, and so it's a good characteristic. I'll show you a little later on how to identify them. But I put that pin slightly to the right on the elytra. The elytra are the first pair of wings that are a little hardened and thicker than the more transparent flight wings behind. Um, so, and I'm going to go right through. Right there. That's about perfect height. So here's our Regivia day. And this Regivia was collected in Utah. And so it's not a plant pest. This is a predator. And I'm going to put that slightly off to the right of the thorax. And if we can get close enough, you might be able to see that little mouth part just right off the tip of the head. There's a really small little proboscis there. And that's what it uses to impale its its prey, and then it sucks out its uh, bodily fluids. It's a neat little critter, so I like to have these in the yard. And then it's very important, so I don't get these mixed up, that I place it in the proper group based on its locality for now. So, well, thanks for watching. I'll pin some more insects and help you organize them, identify them by their orders. But this will give you a good a good uh, start on your collection.